So welcome to Naresha Technologies. My name is Mahesh. I am taking Java Android classes training in Naresha IT. So in my last video, I explained, so what is XML layout file? For each and every screen in Android, we had to create two files we had to create. Let us take, this is my requirement. I want to show this message I want to show on the screen. Welcome to Naresha IT. So for this one, we had to create what? One XML file we had to create and one Java file we had to create. So in our last class, we already discussed about this XML file creation already explained, how to create the user interface by using XML, how to create the user interface. I already explained the XML file creation in the last class, okay? So in this video, I will explain you the Java file creation. Technically, the XML file is called as layout file and the Java file is called as what? Activity, okay? So the Java file you can create in the project. So once if you create the project, so in our previous videos, we already discussed about the directory structure. XML file will be created in the resource folder. In layout folder, you can find the XML file you can find. And we already discussed about this XML file creation we already discussed in the last class, okay? So today, we will discuss about the Java file creation we will discuss. So we will discuss what? The Java file creation we will discuss. So Java file will be created in this Java folder. In Java folder, you can find the package name you can find. And observe here, in Java folder, you can find three folders you can find with the same name. See cubex of dot hello NIT, cubex of dot hello NIT in the brackets, Android test. So you can find the test projects you can find. But basically development project, you can take the first one. See the development for development project, you cannot find any uh, test kind of name you cannot find for the development package name. So in this package, you can find a Java file you can find called main activity is a Java. I mean by default when you create a project, by default we got a Java file, we got by default. Let us open the Java code, open the Java code, main activity.java and by default we got some code also we got by default, this is a Java code. What we will do is, we will remove the code, we will remove, I remove the Java code, I remove. Now we will see the manual steps, we will see what are the steps to create an activity. Let us see here, what are the steps to create an activity. What are the steps to create an activity? The first step to create an activity is create a class, create a class with subtype of android.app.activity. This is the first step for creating an activity. What is the first step? Create a class with subtype of android.app.activity is a class name. My question is, why we have to extend this activity class? This is the first step for creating an activity. What is the first step? Create a class with subtype of android.app.activity is a class name. My question is what? Why the class should be subtype of android.app.activity class? What is the need of extending this activity class? Okay. So, if you want to understand this question, why the class should be subtype of android.app.activity class? First of all, we had to understand this activity lifecycle we had to understand. First, we had to understand what? Activity lifecycle we had to understand to understand the question like why the class should be subtype of activity class. The first step is nothing but uh, create a class with subtype of activity class, right? So, we are discussing this activity lifecycle we will discuss. So then after that, we will understand why the class should be subtype of activity class. Activity is having four states. If we take any activity, uh, activity means it is a technical term, but the user term is nothing but screen. For each and every screen in Android, let us take it is having four states. The four states of an activity is nothing but activity does not exist state is one thing. Activity does not exist state. Activity is in foreground state. Activity is in pause state, activity is in pause state and activity is in background state. These are the four states of an activity. If you take any activity, activity will contain what? These four states, does not exist state, foreground state, pause state and background state. These are the four states of an activity, okay? Next, following are the major methods in activity class, following are the major methods in activity class which will participate in activity life cycle. There are n number of methods are there in the activity class, but all the methods will not participate in the activity life cycle. There are seven major methods are there. There are seven major methods which will participate in the activity life cycle. We will see what are that seven methods. 
one is on create is one method on pass on stop on start on resume on restart and on destroy these are the seven major methods in the activity class which will participate in the activity life cycle i am recalling again there are lot of n number of methods are there in the activity class but all the methods will not participate in the life cycle only these seven methods only will participate in the activity life cycle what is these four states and what is these seven methods okay let's i'll try to explain this activity life cycle with a simple example okay so to understand what exactly the activity life cycle okay i'll take an application i'll take for demonstrating this activity life cycle okay uh, the commonly most widely used application will take what's our application will take for demonstrating this activity life cycle okay i'm connecting my phone i'm connecting for demonstrating this activity life cycle okay this is my phone preview it's loading the phone preview i'll try to explain this activity life cycle with the help of whatsapp application let's say in my phone there is an app called whatsapp is application now the first state of an activity this whatsapp application contains some activities whatsapp application contains what some activities now the state of an activity still we have not started the application we have not started the first state of an activity is nothing but activity does not exist it whatsapp application contains some activities the first state we have not started it the first state of an activity is what activity does not exist it means still it is not started let's take the first state is does not exist state we have not started still this is the first state of an activity okay now here what i am doing is i am selecting this whatsapp application i am selecting first is does not exist state i am selecting this whatsapp application i am selecting once if you select this whatsapp application you will get one activity you will get into foreground you will get correct or not we got one activity we got into foreground we got initially this state in this activity is in a does not exist state now the activity came from does not exist state to foreground state we got correct or not it's initially this screen is in a does not exist state now the activity came from does not exist state to foreground state we got okay now what is the state of an activity now the activity came from does not exist state to foreground state i mean the visible state now one activity is came into foreground now what is activity state activity is in a foreground state internally internally in the activity class it is going to call these three methods to enter the activity from does not exist state to foreground state let's see what are the methods it is going to call three methods is going to be call to enter the activity from does not exist state to foreground state one is on create on start and on resume by calling these three methods the activity will come from does not exist state to foreground state initially this activity stays in a does not exist state not showing state but now the activity came from does not exist state to what it came to a a foreground state it is came came to a foreground state this is the first state act does not exist and now does not exist once if you choose application it came to what foreground state and another important thing all the activities will maintain in a stack okay this is the activity stack this is what the activity stack imagine this is your view point this is the activity stack and this is what your view point activity stack initially this activity stack is empty this activity stack is what empty whenever you choose an what's the application we got one activity we got into the foreground we got right now in what's the application one activity is foreground state let's say what is that activity name charts correct or not by default we got the chart screen we got by default right let's say initially there is no any any activities in the stack but now one activity is came into the foreground one activity is came let's say what is that activity charts activity initially the activity is in a does not exist state from does not exist state now the activity is came into what foreground state okay what i am doing is let's take now the activity is in foreground state i mean the visible state now what i am doing is here i'm selecting the power button i'm selecting i'm selecting what the power button i'm selecting in my phone once if you select the power button 
the activity is going to be now tell me what is the state of an activity when i when the activity is in foreground state what i did is simply i selected the power button i selected the screen is off can i know what is the state of an activity in this one in this situation it is going to enter the activity into pause state meaning it's st still there activity is there still in the foreground but it is going to enter into what into pause state will enter okay so whenever the screen is off when the screen is in a foreground state when the screen is off the activity is going to enter from a foreground state to pause state will enter the activity is going to enter into what foreground state to pause state will enter the activity will enter into a pause state by calling a method call on pause method by calling on pause method the activity will enter from foreground state to pause state will enter okay now see here now what is the state of an activity activity is in a pause state when the activity is in foreground chats activity we select the power button we selected the screen is off that's it activity is entered into a pause state will enter now what i am doing is again i am selecting the power button i am selecting again again if you select the power button now the activity will came into foreground again initially this is does not exist pause state when you screen on again again the activity will come from pause state to what into foreground state we got again so let's take here the activity is entered from pause state to what pause state to foreground state an activity will enter from pause state to foreground state by calling a method call on resume method by calling on resume method the activity will enter from pause state to what foreground state the activity will enter from pause state to what into the foreground state the activity will enter okay now here one activity is in a foreground state what is that activity name charts correct or not in this stack one activity is in a foreground state that is charts activity is in a foreground state that's what we listed here the viewpoint meaning we are able to see which screen we are able to see chart screen we are able to see now chart screen is in a foreground state what i'm doing is here i'm selecting this lex icons contact i'm selecting this lex icons contact i'm selecting now when you select this particular contact see what happens i'm selecting this lex icons contact i'm selecting once if you select that particular contact whenever you choose that lex icons we got one activity we got into foreground state we got meaning on top of the charts we got one more activity we got into foreground what is that one lex icons on top of the charts we got one activity we got into foreground we got this contact i selected meaning on top of the chart screen we got this lex icons contact we got on top of the chart screen now here tell me when the lex icons contact is came into the foreground now which screen we are able to see see the view point here from the view point in the stack which which activity we are able to see lex icons contact we are able to see meaning now the foreground activities lex icons is a foreground activity whenever the new activities came into the foreground the existing foreground activity is going to enter into what into background it will enter whenever the new activity is entered into a foreground the current foreground activity is going to enter into what into background state will enter now here whenever the new activity is entered into the foreground whenever a new activity is entered into foreground the current foreground activity is going to enter into what into background state enter the current foreground activity meaning now here in this stack tell me which one is a foreground which one is a background lex icons is a foreground activity and charts is a background activity when the lex icons is came into the foreground the charts activity is entered into what into background meaning in the lex icons it's going to call on create on start on resume in the charts activity it is going to call these two methods will be called on pause and on stop by calling these two methods the activity will enter from foreground state to background state the activity will enter now here in the in the stack there are two activities are there in the stack what are the two activities one is lex icons is one activity and one more thing is charts is another activity okay now here what i'm doing is i'm selecting this back button i'm selecting these are the two activities in the stack one is a foreground and one more thing is a background lex icons is what the foreground activity what i'm doing is here i'm selecting the back button i'm selecting here i'm selecting what the back button i'm selecting here what will happen when you select this back button here what happens is i selected back button i selected that activity is destroyed that current foreground activity is destroyed so whenever you press the back button the current foreground in the activity stack 
the current foreground activity will be destroyed meaning this flex icons is a current foreground activity right this particular activity will be destroyed. See here when the current foreground screen is destroyed automatically the viewpoint is showing which screen the chart screen when the current foreground activity is destroyed by default it is showing what the chart screen is showing to the user right meaning whenever the current foreground activity is destroyed automatically the background activity will be entered into the foreground state the current foreground activity will be destroyed by calling three methods let us see what are the three methods one is on pause is one method on pass, on stop and on destroy. By calling these three methods, by calling these three methods, the current foreground activity will be destroyed. The current foreground screen will be destroyed by calling these three methods. When the current foreground screen is destroyed, automatically the background activity will show to the user. Automatically, the background activity will show to the user. The background activity comes to the foreground state. The background activity comes to the foreground state by calling three methods. Let us see what are the three methods. One is even the order is also same thing like in which order I am writing even this methods order is also important. Let us take first it is going to call on create, on start and on resume to enter into foreground state. The current to foreground screen will be destroyed now it is in a reverse order. On pause is going to call first next on stop and on destroy methods is going to be called. When the current to foreground screen is destroyed the background activity comes to the foreground state by calling three methods. Let us see what are the three methods. First it is going to call on restart method will be called on restart, on start and on resume. On restart, on restart, on start and on resume. By calling these three methods the background activity will enter into the foreground state will enter. Okay. Okay, now we here, now there is only one activity is there in the stack. There is only one activity is there in the stack called charts activity is only the one activity in the stack. Now observe here what I am doing is, now I am selecting the back button I am selecting. Once if you press the back button what happens is the current to foreground activity is going to be destroyed. Now I selected the back button I selected but see here common was there is no application entire app is closed. Why the entire app is closed because whenever you press a back button if there is any activity in the stack that background activity comes to the foreground. That background activity comes to what? Foreground. But now here when I select the back button in the charts, now the activity stack is became what? Empty. There is no any activities in the stack. Then at that time it is going to close the application. It is going to close the application. If any background activity, that background activity comes to what? Foreground. But if there is no activities in the stack, when it is in a contact screen, I selected a back button I selected. So, this current foreground screen will be destroyed, correct or not? When there is no activities in the stack, simply it is going to close the application. This is activity life cycle. These are the four states of an activity. These are what? The four states of an activity. Observe here, if you are creating any screen, let us take for example, our requirement is we want to show that welcome to Naresh ID screen we want to show, right? Meaning we want to create an activity we want to create. So, if you are creating any activity, we have to write the logic to maintain this life cycle. So, what is this foreground meaning if, if, if it enter from does not exist state, when user select the app, uh, show the activity in a foreground state. Okay, when user select the power button, enter this activity into a pause state. When some other activity comes to foreground, put this activity in a background state. Meaning if you are creating any activity, as a developer, we have to write the logic to maintain this life cycle, we have to write the logic. See, I am a beginner, even I am first time listening all these terms like what is foreground, background, all these things. It is not common for one screen. If you are creating 100 screens, if you are creating in your project, for all the 100 screens you have to maintain this life cycle, you have to maintain. Meaning, if you are creating any activity, for each and every activity, we have to write the logic to maintain this life cycle. Okay? But it is very difficult to write that logic to maintain this life cycle. That is why you don't need to take that risk. You don't need to take that risk for creating the activity life cycle, for maintaining the activity life cycle. Simply, if you are creating any class, if you are creating, let us take I am creating an activity I am creating called main activity is a class. I am creating an activity called main activity I am creating. If you are creating any activity class, simply create a class with subtype of, if you are creating any activity class, simply create a class with subtype of what? 
Android dot app dot activity class. Let me show once again. If you are creating any activity, simply create a class with subtype of Android dot app dot activity class. That is it. If you create a class with subtype of Android dot app dot activity class, automatically you are going to get the logic to maintain this life cycle. Meaning explicitly we don't need to write any logic we need to write to maintain the life cycle. Simply if you create a class if you create with subtype of Android dot app dot activity class, automatically you are going to get here I am specifying a word called create a class with subtype of Android dot app dot activity. Meaning we are using a concept called inheritance concept you are using. We are inheriting some properties from activity class to your main activity class. What are the properties we are inheriting is the logic is already there in the activity class to maintain the life cycle. That logic we don't to create once again we are inheriting that logic we are inheriting from the activity class to what the main activity class we are inheriting that logic we are inheriting. Okay. So, this is the first step uh, simply create a class with subtype of android dot app dot activity to maintain the life cycle. Okay. So, I hope you guys are understand we are discussing for creating an activity uh, the first question we raised for creating an activity the first step is create a class with subtype of activity class then we raise a question like why why it should be a subtype of activity class. The reason is nothing but to maintain the activity life cycle to maintain the activity life cycle the class should be subtype of the class should be subtype of android dot app dot activity class. Okay. This is the first step. Second step let us see here same like main method same like main method in C, C++ Java in Android activity on create method will be invoke first on create method will be invoke first. So, overwrite the on create method this is the second step if you want we will give the points will give like this is the first step create a class with subtype of activity class is the first first point. The second thing is nothing but execution of an activity is going to start with the on create method same like the main method C, C++ Java here in Android activity it is going to call what which method on create method will be called. So, if you want to write any logic in the beginning of a screen so just overwrite this on create method and write the logic in on create method we will write the logic. So, we will do the second step observe here okay, first step we will perform public I am creating a class I am creating public class main activity public class main activity it should be what subtype of extends android dot app dot activity class. Okay. Next see here okay, this is the first step but showing an error is showing here public class main activity it is showing an error. Why it is showing the error because we are creating a class we are creating under a package we are creating a class we are creating called main activity under a package called cubexsoft dot hello nit. So, the initial statement initial statement should be what the package name. So, let us add the package name here package. So, what is the package name cubexsoft dot I specified dot hello nit is the package name. We are creating a Java class we are creating under a package called a cubexsoft dot hello and hello nit. So, the initial statement in the Java class should be the package name statement we have to include. Then after that create a class with subtype of activity class. Okay, we are done with the first step. Next what is second step? Overwrite the on create method. If we create the method same like how we declared in the parent class that is nothing but method overriding concept. So, I am overriding a method called on create method I am overriding. Just if you type o n automatically you are going to get the list of methods with that particular starting character o n. So, we have to choose a method called what on create method we have to choose. So, here you can find a method called on create method let us choose this on create method. When I select that on create method automatically I got the implementation I got for this on create method. And see here in this on create method the initial statement in this on create method is nothing but super dot on create. What is the meaning of this super dot on create? why we had to write this statement super dot on create inside the on create method. Okay, one thing is fine activity execution is going to start with on create. So, that is why we are overriding the method, but why it is calling this super dot on create meaning super dot on create means nothing, but it is invoking what 
the parent class on create method it is invoking what is the reason let's see why it is why it is calling the super class on create method it's simple we discussed already we discussed the activity class is having the logic to maintain this life cycle the activity class is already having the logic to maintain what the life cycle this android dot app dot activity class is already having some logic in the on create method to maintain the life cycle this on create method which is used to maintain the life cycle if you overwrite the method in the child class the parent class on create logic is going to be removed or not yes because we are we are using a overriding concept we are using the parent class on cre on create logic will be removed uh, means that logic will not implement the parent class on create logic will not implement if you if you override that method the child class on create logic will implement but if it is not call this method we cannot maintain the life cycle we cannot maintain this on create method is already having some logic to maintain the life cycle that's why what we are doing is we are calling the super dot on create method we are calling boss definitely we have a situ we have a situation uh, we have to call the on create method there is no option because execution of an activity is going to start the on create method we had to call the on create method we had to call but it should not remove the it has to it has to invoke the parent class on create logic it has to invoke we are overriding the method and in the method the initial statement we specified super dot on create we called meaning invoke the parent class on create logic invoke the parent class on create met, on create method logic then after that you can write your logic after this super dot on create it's mandatory we had to call this one why it's mandatory because super class on create is having some logic to maintain the life cycle that logic we had to call first that's why we are calling this super dot on create and one more thing this on create method is taking one class object as input what is that one bundle bundle object it is taking as input what is this bundle bundle is a class in android which is used to maintain the activity state like you want to you want to know your activity state like whether it is activity is in a pause state or in a foreground state or in a background state in which activity uh, the state of an activity if you want to know the state of an activity if you want to know you can use this bundle class object we can use okay saved instance state is just a variable name for the bundle class if you want you can rename this one you can rename because it's just what it's just a variable name for the bundle class so bundle is a class which is used to get the state of an activity like whether it's in a foreground state or it's in a pause state or it's in a background state if you want to get that state if you want to get we can use this bundle class object you can use okay this is the second step first step is extends activity class second step is what override the on create method what is the third step is we already discussed already the beginning of a class already explained what exactly our requirement is our requirement is we want to show a message you want to show on the screen called welcome to naresh it message you want to show on the screen right let's take let me draw this is our requirement we want to show this message you want to show on the screen for this one we had to create two files we had to create one is xml file and java file for this screen we already created the xml file we already created we already discussed xml part and now we are discussing the java file okay for each and every screen xml and java file is required there should be a some link between this xml file and java file or not yes we design this user interface we design in xml and now we are writing the logic in java we are writing the logic there should be a link between the xml file and the java file where we will provide that link we'll see that one there is a method called set content view is a method the third step let's see what is the third step set content view method r dot layout dot specify the xml file specify what the xml file method is used to set method is used to set the xml file xml file to java set content view is a method this method is used to set what the xml file to what java file there should be a link between the xml file and java file that link will provide by using this set content view method this method we had to call inside the on create method after this super statement set content view specify r dot we create xml file created in the layout folder layout activity underscore main so here r is nothing but resource folder layout means nothing but inside the resource folder there is a folder called layout folder inside the layout folder there is xml file we are calling that xml file we are calling okay these are the three steps are involved 
in creating the activity file. Extends activity class, override the onCreate method. The third thing is what? We had to provide the link with the XML file and Java file. That link we are providing by using what? By using a set content view method, we are providing that link we are providing. Okay. So this is about the activity creation. Okay. In our, in our previous video, we seen the XML file creation we seen in the last video. And in this video, I explained about the Java file creation. What are the steps to create an activity file? Okay. In the next video file, let us take how to test this application. Okay. We created project we created. We create XML file and Java file we created. How can you test the application? Okay, that 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 concept we we'll discuss in the next video. I'll discuss so how to test your Android application. So thank you.